The M28 or M29 Davy Crockett weapon system was the tactical nuclear recoilless gun smoothbore for firing the M388 nuclear projectile that was deployed by the United States during the Cold War. It was one of the smallest nuclear weapon systems ever built, with a yield between 10 and 20 tons TNT equivalent 40 to 80 gigajoules. It is named after American folk hero, soldier, and congressman Davy Crockett. Topic development The Davy Crockett recoilless spigot gun was developed in the late 1950s for use against Soviet and North Korean armor and troops in case war broke out in Europe or the Korean Peninsula. Davy Crockett sections were assigned to United States Army Europe and 8th United States Army armor and mechanized and non-mechanized infantry battalions. During alerts to the inner German border in the Fulda Gap the Davy Crockett's accompanied their battalions. All 5th Corps including 3rd Armored Division combat maneuver battalions had pre-assigned positions in the Fulda Gap. These were known as GDP General Defense Plan positions. The Davy Crockett sections were included in these defensive deployment plans. In addition to the Davy Crockett's e.g., assigned to the 3rd Armored Division, 5th Corps had nuclear artillery rounds and atomic demolition mines, and these were also targeted on the Fulda Gap. On the Korean Peninsula, units assigned the Davy Crockett weapons primarily planned to use the passes that funneled armor as killing grounds, creating temporarily deadly radioactive zones roadblocked by destroyed tanks and other vehicles. The M388 round used a version of the MK-54 warhead, a very small sub-kiloton fission device. The MK-54 weighed about 51 pounds 23 kilograms, with a yield equivalent to somewhere between 10 and 20 tons of TNT, close to the minimum practical size for a fission warhead, and comparable in yield to the largest conventional bombs developed at the time. The only selectable feature with either version of the Davy Crockett M28 and M29 was the height of burst dial on the warhead. Post Davy Crockett versions of the W54 nuclear device apparently had a selectable yield feature. See below for high, low switch and launching piston references. The complete round weighed 76 pounds, 34.5 kilograms. It was 31 in 78.7 centimeters long with a diameter of 11 in 28 cm at its widest point, a subcaliber piston at the back of the shell was inserted into the launcher's barrel for firing. The piston was considered a spigot prior to the discharge of the propellant cartridge in the recoilless gun chamber of the Davy Crockett. The M388 atomic projectile was mounted on the barrel inserted spigot via bayonet slots. Once the propellant was discharged the spigot became the launching piston for the M388 atomic projectile. The nuclear yield is hinted at in FM 9-11, Operation and Employment of the Davy Crockett Battlefield Missile, XM-28-29 the M388 could be launched from either of two launchers known as the Davy Crockett Weapon Systems, the 4.7-inch mm M28, with a range of about 1.25 miles 2 km, or the 6.1-in mm M29, with a range of 2.5 miles 4 km. Both weapons used the same projectile, and were either mounted on a tripod launcher transported by an armored personnel carrier, or they were carried by a Jeep, M38 and later M151. The Jeep was equipped with an attached launcher for the M28 or the M29, as required, whereas the Davy Crockett carried by an armored personnel carrier was set up in the field on a tripod away from the carrier. The Davy Crockett's were operated by a three-man crew. In the 3rd Armored Division in Germany in the 1960s many Davy Crockett sections all of which were in the heavy mortar platoons, in headquarters companies of infantry or armor maneuver battalions received what became a mix of M28 and M29 launchers e.g., one of each per D.C. section. 
Eventually, the M-28s were replaced by M-29s, so that both the armored personnel carriers and the jeeps carried the M-29. Both recoilless guns proved to have poor accuracy in testing, so the shell's greatest effect would have been its extreme radiation hazard. The M388 would produce an almost instantly lethal radiation dosage in excess of 10,000 rem, 100 sieverts within 500 feet, 150 meters, and a probably fatal dose around 600 rem, 6 sieverts within a quarter mile, 400 meters. The weapon did not have an abort function, if fired, the warhead would explode. The warhead was tested on July 7, 1962, in the Little Fella 2 weapons effects test shot, and again in an actual firing of the Davy Crockett from a distance of 1.7 miles in the Little Fella I test shot on July 17. This was the last atmospheric test detonation at the Nevada test site. Production of the Davy Crockett began following the 15th of August 1958 at Picatinny Arsenal approval of the design with a total of 2100 being made. The weapon was tested between 1962 and 1968 at the Pohakaloa training area on Hawaii Island with 714 M101 spotter rounds, not live warheads that contained depleted uranium. The weapon was deployed with U.S. Army forces from 1961 to 1971. It was removed from U.S. Army Europe in West Germany in August 1967. Versions of the W-54 warhead were also used in the Special Atomic Demolition Munition Project and the AIM-26A Falcon. MK-54 Davy Crockett, 10 or 20 ton yield, Davy Crockett gun warhead, MK-54 SADM, variable yield 10 ton to 1 kiloton, special atomic demolition munition device W-54 to 250 ton yield, warhead for AIM-26 Falcon air-to-air -air missile 55th and 56th Infantry platoons, attached to the division artillery of the U.S. 82nd Airborne Division, were the last units equipped with the M-29 Davy Crockett weapons system. These two units were parachute deployed and, with a one-half ton truck per section three per platoon, were fully air droppable. The units were deactivated in mid-1968. <laughs> Proposed German military use One of the most fervent supporters of the Davy Crockett was West Germany's Defense Minister Franz Josef Strauss, in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Strauss promoted the idea of equipping German brigades with the nuclear weapon, to be supplied by the U.S., arguing that this would allow German troops to become a much more effective factor in NATO's defense of Germany against a potential Soviet invasion. He argued that a single Davy Crockett could replace 40 to 50 salvos of a whole divisional artillery park, allowing the funds and troops normally needed for this artillery to be invested into further troops, or not having to be spent at all. U.S. NATO commanders strongly opposed Strauss's ideas, as they would have made the use of tactical nuclear weapons almost mandatory in case of war, further reducing the ability of NATO to defend itself without resorting to atomic weapons. Topic museum examples The following museums have a Davy Crockett casing in their collection, Air Force Space and Missile Museum, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida National Atomic Museum, adjacent to Kirtland AFB, Albuquerque New Mexico National Infantry Museum, Fort Benning, Georgia United States Army Ordnance Museum, Fort Lee, Virginia Waterleet Arsenal Museum, Waterleet, New York West Point Museum, U.S. Military Academy, West West Point, New York Atomic Testing Museum, Las Vegas, Nevada Don F. Pratt Museum, Fort Campbell, Clarksville, Tennessee. <laughs> 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 <laugh